All right. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I hope everybody is safe and I uh, hope uh, you're actually enjoying more family time and being together as we're all um, undergoing social isolation. It's, it's an opportunity to, to also bring families together and more, more or, and, and, and closer to one another. So um, that is probably one of the silver linings and also learning not to eat out so much uh, and uh, uh, learning to, to cook at home and, and, uh, and be with family. And uh, today we have uh, Tark and Mercedes. I, I consider him the star behind the stars. Uh, you know, we have so many rock stars, influencers and all that stuff in social media and people uh, getting all the attention and uh, limelight um, when we look at uh, YouTube and, and go to conferences. But the, you need an organizer uh, to really direct them in a way that is constructive, productive, and meaningful, and uh, moves the needle on, on our issues of social justice. And one of those people I, I consider uh, to be a friend and, and, and high regard and high esteem is Tarka Masidi. And um, I probably have known him for a while, but he, he really, uh, I think he really, Tark, he really, came out when uh, we had the unfortunate uh, disaster, horrific incident in uh, Chapel, uh, North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill, where the three Muslims who were murdered uh, in a hate crime, and, and at first it was not considered a hate crime, and you worked um, and you developed a, a program or in, in concert with others on My Three Heroes about those three individuals. And and uh, make sure people don't forget uh, about the, the hate crimes that are happening uh, in our society and, and, and how, to, how to push back. And the way you push back is, is, is exactly what your organization represents. And, and that is you push back through the prophet's example of, of mercy, uh, that he was sent uh, for no other reason than to be a mercy to all of humanity. Uh, and, and so tell us a little bit about how that started and, and where it is now. And, and then we'll talk about how it's dealing with the, with the coronavirus crisis. After. Yeah. Well, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, thank you, Saddam, for having, having me on with MPAC. Um, the, the work you guys do, I've always really admired at MPAC. Um, and it's multifaceted. I know you guys are doing things in so many different uh, areas, mashallah, including even Hollywood and uh, impacting the narrative out there about Muslims in Hollywood. Um, actually, our my communication or work or collaboration with MPAC even preceded the uh, Our Three Winners tragedy because um, Celebrate Mercy began 10 years ago. We started doing these, you know, inf educational webinars. We even had, uh, you know, um, Ammu Maher Hatut on our webinars in the early days. Actually, Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. And a couple of years after we began, um, that's when uh, U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens was killed in Libya mm -hmm. um, by Muslim extremists in Libya. And that's when MPAC actually stepped up to collaborate and you know publicize the the campaign that we started to mobilize Muslims to write condolence letters to the family of Chris Stevens. Initially, the goal was to write a thousand letters of kindness to his family, but it really went viral. Um, somehow it made it to the front page of reddit.com and it just went viral, that campaign. And we ended up collecting almost um, 8,000 letters from Muslims in 115 countries. MPAC was really generous in how it supported that and promoted it. Um, so that was our first work together with MPAC and other organizations like ISNA and others helped as well. Um, and, you know, fast forwarding uh, by th uh, about three years, that's when the Our Three Winners tragedy took place. Um, you know, honestly, we say our, our mission statement has kind of morphed and changed a little bit since we first started because we were mainly focused on educational webinars to try to make the prophet's life, peace be upon him, like relevant to our day-to-day -day lives. Sometimes we focus so much on the story of his life, but not how to apply it to today. And we, that, that Ambassador Stevens campaign, we call it the Mercy Mail campaign, was the first time we said, hey, we have all these followers 
why don't we try to mobilize them towards a prophetic act, you know, uh, responding to evil with good. And all of our subsequent campaigns after that um, kind of followed that theme of, hey, there's, there's a tragedy, there's people messing something up in the world, whether it's Muslims or not, we're going to go in and fix it. Um, we're going to go in and try to fix it. We're going to go in and try to alleviate pain and go in and try to heal uh, after a tragedy. So, you know, we collaborated on the campaign to uh, give money to the victims of the San Bernardino shooting and um, the, uh, the, the Our Three Winners tragedy. We mobilized Muslim groups to collect canned food at their local masjids and local organizations and uh, distribute those canned foods locally in the memory of our three winners, the three Muslim students, Dia, Yusur, and Razan, who were very service-oriented individuals themselves. You know, may Allah have mercy on them. So every campaign we've done has kind of followed that theme of, you know, which we feel is a core foundational aspect or undercurrent of the sirah, of the prophetic biography, is respond to evil with good, respond to evil with that which is better, as the Quran says. Itfa' billati hiya ahsan. Mm -hmm. and excellent. yeah that's uh, that's kind of the history there in a nutshell yeah, yeah. no excellent and then each and every time uh, i believe uh when there was a jewish uh, cemetery that was uh, attacked you were there to start the campaign to help uh restore these jewish cemeteries if there's a mosque uh that is suffering a firebomb or any kind of arson attack you were there to yeah. raise money for that mosque so this is really yeah. Beautiful. I mean, the, Jew the Jewish, the Jewish cemetery, and also the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting; those were kind of unique, you know. And um, people, you know, sometimes the media kind of use it as unconventional, like, "Oh, wow, Muslims are repairing yeah. a Jewish cemetery," or Muslims are like donating to families of the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting. Like, that's weird. But it's actually not weird, you know. It's like this is what we should have been doing all along. What we should be doing all along is. You know, we, um, in times of tragedy and disaster, like we don't have to focus on um, politics. Politics goes out the window. Politics is going out the window now. In India right now, the, the politics is going out the window because everyone's right. worried about the coronavirus. Right. You know, so like the Muslim Hindu disputes there and, and problems are, are out the window for the time being because of a greater tragedy that's affecting all of us, you know. So, um, that was unique, uh, I guess, maybe in American Muslim history to see Muslims stepping up and like helping the Jewish community so much. But for us, th this was part of the tradition. When the Prophet ﷺ, peace be upon him, like saw a Jewish funeral passing by at a distance in Medina, you know, he was sitting down with his companions or his disciples, you know, and he stood up to pay his respects mm -hmm. for a Jewish funeral. And many people don't realize that this story took place at a time of very high tension between the Muslim and Jewish community in Medina. Yet the prophet, peace be upon him, stood up to pay his respects and said, is it not a human soul? When he was asked, you know, that's not a Muslim funeral. Like, why are you standing up? And he said, is it not a human soul? And so, you know, that's been also like a, a very inspirational quote or hadith of the prophet, peace be upon him, that has inspired some of our campaigns. Um, and what's amazing is in the Pittsburgh situation, you know, I, we haven't actually even shared this publicly yet ourselves, but the Jewish Federation in Pittsburgh uh, raised in response to the New Zealand shooting, which was, you know, maybe around six months later, right, or five months later, the Jewish community in Pittsburgh raised a million dollars to help with relief efforts for the Muslim community in New Zealand you know, uh, because of what we had done for them. So, um, you know, I was, I, you know, I was like in tears when I saw that story come out, you know, like, so Alhamdulillah, like that's what, you know, so we say in a nutshell, we try to teach about the prophet, peace be upon him through our words and through our actions. You know, our words being our ongoing educational programs and webinars, actions being the prophet inspired campaigns. So, in, in a nutshell, restoring our Islamic obligation, the ethics that we, we find in essence within the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Peace be upon him. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, we, we believe in an Islam that goes beyond just the rituals and going to Juma and all these things. Like it has to manifest in our day to day lives. It has to, Muslims have to make everything around them a better place. You know, that's, that's part of the prophetic mission. So, 
Are you saying that one of the silver linings in all this is that we're bringing humanity together, that all these crises are actually telling us and showing us, directing us to the truth, that we're all one human family and we need to act like that more? And this, this is how we demonstrate that? Yeah, that is the silver lining. I mean, obviously what's going on now is a global crisis and we want it to end ASAP, but there, in, in the midst of sometimes the most difficult circumstances, there, there are positive things that come out of it or results from it. And I think, yeah, you're absolutely right that we are just seeing our shared humanity. If, if you know, for example, like what I mentioned in India, like if Muslims and Hindus are now just focusing, wait, we have a greater enemy here, you know, like, you know, like there, or, or even in other places in the world where, you have ongoing conflicts and disputes and oppression. Um, now it's, we have a greater challenge as humans to rise up to. So tell us about your current project in terms of helping those in need, uh, mm -hmm. relieving families who are suffering economically, going from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Um, th things like that. What, what uh, is Celebrate Mercy uh, leading in, in, yeah. in which effort? I'm gonna try to share this flyer here and see if it works. Maybe oh, it yeah. does. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, yeah, I've had to learn how to use Zoom recently, as, as we all. So, um, so this, is, uh, this is the campaign here um, that we started along with uh, Penny Appeal USA and ICNYU, where Imam Khalid Latif is the chaplain. Um, this campaign is the latest uh, effort that we've done, and, and mashallah, MPAC and so many other groups have come on as publicity partners and really helped to to, to fuel this campaign. Um, but this is a campaign where we're asking, you know, Americans who have been hit hard by this crisis financially, lost the job, having trouble affording rent, single parent households that um, have to choose now between going to work or paying for childcare. Like there's, a, you know, I saw estimates that two to three million people in March alone are gonna be losing their jobs in yeah. America. So this is an effort where people can easily get cash in their hands through this campaign um, faster than the U.S. government will ever send out checks, you know, because that's going <laughs> to take in a while, right. even now. Um, so this has already helped about, as of last Friday, a week, a week after the campaign began, as of last Friday, about 400 individuals from, I think, around 200 households have already been sent checks. And these checks range between $250 to $1,000. Um, so you can visit launchgood.com slash corona. Right now it's been raising an average of about forty dollars to $50,000 every single day. So we have people giving and we have people going to this page also and applying for aid. And um, Penny Appeal has been able to issue checks, maybe like 20 to 40 checks a day. Um, going through the you know pretty detailed grant applications that families are filling out and um, and you know it's putting cash in people's hands you know very fast right away within days. Well, God bless you for that for that effort. Alhamdulillah. Um, and, and and of course I have to specify this is not only for Muslims. You know we right. say clearly like this is to any American of any background, any faith or no faith that needs help. And, and if anybody has questions, please uh, go ahead and start directing your questions to Tarek. Uh, we'll be on for another 10 to 15 minutes uh, talking to him about this, uh, this wonderful project that uh, Celebrate Mercy uh, is, is sponsoring uh, in terms of dealing with the coronavirus um, uh, crisis and families, families in need. Um, Tarek, uh, where do you see uh, our mosques going in terms of of relief efforts and, and mm. what they're doing right now. I mean, you know, I, I hear a lot uh, from people saying, well, if we can't go to the mosque for prayer, what's the use of the mosque? How, yeah. what, how do you respond to that? Well, the mosque is a means to an end. You know, like, I, I, you know, we, we just commemorated like a couple of nights ago, the, um, the Isra and Ma'raj, you know, the prophetic uh, miraculous journey of the prophet, peace be upon him, to Jerusalem and to the heavens. And, you know, I, I heard some, there was a couple, there was a friend of mine who said, you know, I hear people saying, you know, subhanAllah, like, you know, the, the prophet, peace be upon him, was gifted with the prayer, five daily prayers during the Isra and Ma'raj. You know, during the Isra and Ma'raj, that's when he was instructed, have your community pray five times a day, right? And now we can't even do that. I was like, no, you know, actually, at the time of the Isra and Ma'raj, it was the Meccan phase of the Sira, and there was no mosque. 
<laughs> you know, right. there was a mosque for Muslims to pray in when right. the prophet, peace be upon him, was told to have your community pray five times a day. So we, we, you know, the the first community of Muslims had no mosque, right. you know, and uh, they were the best of the best, right? I mean, there was in Mecca, there were no hypocrites, <laughs> you know. Right. It was hard to be Muslim in Mecca. You were either a Muslim or you were the the, 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 the <laughs> right, right, exactly. Right. That's it. So yeah, you you know, the mosque came after the hijra. So. Um, we have a masjid in our hearts, you know, and, and uh, we can pray at home. The masjid is a means to an end. The masjid is a means to purify our hearts. The masjid is a means to be good to our families, to be good to the society, to serve people, right? But if the masjid's not there for the time being, we have to make our, our homes a masjid. And, um, you know, our, the best of our community had no mosque. So we can, we can do the same, inshallah, for now. So Ramadan is coming up. Uh, everybody's now um, talking about how, how do we do the tarawih prayers and do the iftars if nobody yeah. wants to, you know, and practice social distancing. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I, I mean, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be really awkward to not be able to go to the mosque in Ramadan um, for tarawih prayers. I mean, this is a time I think families need to pray together. You know, um, families need to have their own tarawih prayers. There are so many, I mean, we're, we're in the midst of planning some online, um, you know, spiritual uh, webinars and content, you know, like, uh, you know, for tarawih and, and during tarawih time and stuff like that. There's, there's so many groups out there and institutes that are going to be providing online content to make up for some of the learning and the inspiration that we get from the mosques. So, I would say, you know, um, pray, pray tarawih for the family, make this a time of, you know, uh, make this a time of khalwa, of like spiritual retreat. Um, sometimes there are spiritual fruits that you can get in isolation that you can't get in a community. You know, like I know there's a lot of masjids that have been telling me like, oh, we had to cancel, or, or groups, we had to cancel our fundraiser. Like we have these fundraising events where people say, I'll give 5,000, I'll give 10,000, I'll give 1,000. Right. Well, now is the time to try to do it without everyone seeing you give, you know? Now right. is the time to like, let's, let's meet Allah on the day of judgment saying, I, I pledged at all those public fundraisers, but when I had to be at home and do the same thing, I gave even more money. I gave even more money to causes. I, 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 I gave in public Hello? and I gave in private. Right. And I think the idea here is what you're, what Hello? you're saying. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Wa alaikum salam. Oh. oh, you can hear me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue talking. I'm sorry. I was just testing it. Sorry about oh, that. Okay. Yeah. And then if you have a All question, right. just go ahead and, and, and uh, type it in I, the chat. Space. That room. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No problem. No problem. No worries, brother. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so, uh, and, and again, everyone, if you have a question, please direct it to the chat space and you can go ahead and type it in and we'll, we'll ask Tark uh, the, the question. Um, and we want this to be, you know, as interactive as possible. Uh, we can't have everybody talking right now because there's too many. Uh, but uh, uh, if you can type it, uh, we really, really would appreciate that. Thank you. And please make sure that your phone is on mute or your, your Zoom is on mute um, as you're uh, watching our, our, our program here. Um, so, Tark, I, I think the idea is that, you know, giving in this time is more critical than giving uh, ever before. Uh, this is the time yeah. when... Nonprofits, when the needy, the homeless, all the refugees of the country, uh, of the world, that's when they need us to step up now. Uh, the relief bills that we need to advocate for in, in the Congress to make sure that it's not just going to the businesses and the corporate world and the financial sector, but you know, to the average person, to the person that really needs it the most. This is the time that we need to be working the hardest on that. But you know, it just seems like in our community, people are saying, well, you know, we're, we're going to suffer economically. We can't give, and and uh, people are laying off, and 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 it's as if we're tr we're almost saying to the nonprofit sector, just go ahead and shut down with the rest of the country. Yeah, that's that's not good. I mean, I I feel like um, you know, we believe the prophet peace be upon him to be true, and he said that no capital decreases from wealth, and he also said that sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace be upon him that. Uh, giving and charity blocks calamities. So if people are saying, you know, what can I, you know, what kind of uh, supplements should I be 
<laughs> having right now to, to, to increase my immunity. Yes, you need supplements and your vitamin C and amino acids and take your garlic and all that stuff, but give as well, because the prophet, peace be upon him, said that giving uh, averts calamities. It, it blocks, it creates a barrier between you and tribulation. So a great way to protect ourselves from harm is to give, you know, and that's, of course, not the only reason we give, but but um, there are messages out there struggling right now because they're not getting donations at their Jummah prayers. You know, donations at Jummah for mosques, at Friday prayers are like so important to their day-to-day -day operations. And they're having to make difficult choices like, uh, can we pay our imam? Can we pay our administrators at the mosque? Because we're not getting any income. So don't, don't decrease your giving. I would say increase your giving in these times because um, we want to meet Allah on the day of judgment saying we had a personal calamity. We had, we had a difficulty that we endured as a community, as a family, and we only increased in our goodness and our giving and our, and our generosity. And that is, that is something so blessed and so amazing that will bless our, 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 our families in this life and in the next, inshallah. Yeah, and Maksud Ahmed just wrote, we just raised $100,000 for our Islamic school over the weekend through our WhatsApp group. So oh, wow. people are wow. figuring it out. So thank you yeah. Masood, for sharing that. That's a great, that, that's a great that's example great. to set for the rest of us. Thank you. Um, yeah. uh, you know, also in Ramadan, all the organizations go and raise money in the Tarawih prayers. They're not going to be able to do that this time. Yeah. So yeah. We are going to have to figure out how to, how to raise uh, funds for, for uh, our organizations in, a, in, in other ways. Um, yeah. And, 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 and so when, we, when we're thinking about that, how do you communicate then to the people that it's time to give? I mean, there's the hadith of the prophet, peace and, bless, peace and blessings be upon him, that says, even if you have one date, share half of a date with somebody who, who is less privileged than you. So the idea that you only give when you're wealthy is, is really not the point. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, I know, I know the direct, I know a director of a nonprofit who um, he makes it a monthly habit that he calls the, the people who are the smallest monthly donors and the people that are the largest monthly donors, because he said the people that are giving $5 a month to our organization sometimes or 10, they're actually giving a large portion. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal to them. Right. be able to get five or 10. Um, so it's not about the amount. It's really about, um, does it hurt a little bit? You know, because like we, there's a, there's a zakat and teskia is, right. is come from like purification. Right. So um, the, the, the concept is how much does it hurt? You right. know, because that's where the test is. That's where the purification is, you know, like, you know, um, uh, Ustad Hisham Mahmoud from your area in SoCal, right? right? He has this thing where he says like, if you're just benching like a 10 pound bar, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna build muscle, but you have to tear into the muscle a little bit. You have right. to like put some weights on the bar, tear into the muscle, and then the muscle grows back stronger. And it's the same for our souls. You know, we have the the, the charity we give has to not just be, uh, you know, something that we it doesn't really impact us. It should impact us a little bit. It should hurt a little bit, and that's where the purification comes in. Inshallah, that we'll see in this life and in the next. Inshallah. And that's exactly what tazkiyah means. The cat means purifying. Um, yeah, purify your wealth. Purify and it, yourself, you know, yeah. pray, prayer is like the pure is the zakat of our time. You know, like we purify our time and our with with prayer as well. Um, can you go over the categories of zakat? People think that it's only to to give uh, to the uh, um, to the homeless or to to those who want some food, and that is one category. But there's so many other categories of zakat. Which categories do you? do you follow in terms of the giving um, and, and, and disbursement yeah. of funds? Well, there's a, I don't have the verse memorized. There is a verse from the Quran that kind of uh, categorizes like who is eligible for zakat. And it's like very broad and wide ranging, right? Um, and there are some nonprofits that have differences of opinion as to like where, you know, how they use the cat. But for us as an organization, like, you know, we thought of like how at Celebrate Mercy, like how can Zakat funds be used for the programs that we do? So the way we use it, for example, is when we host uh, Sira learning uh, conferences um, or program, educational programs that, that, that there, where there is a fee, you know, like to go to like one of our weekend conferences, it could be like $100, right, to, to go to one of our 
weekend intensive programs. So we actually have a fund that helps people who can't afford those costs. Even out of towners who come in and need like a hotel or uh, someone needs to take the Amtrak or train. So we have a scholarship fund that we use to help people who are Zakat eligible to afford educational programs. Um, so it's, it, there is some flexibility and definitely a lot of categories. I don't have that verse memorized, but um, it's easy to find. And yeah. there, it's, it's not as strict or as constricted as people think where it has to be someone who um, it can be used for educational purposes, for example. Right. And I think uh, the, the verse you're referring to, it says those in need, those who are stuck on the road, in other words, those who are stuck uh, yeah. socioeconomically or refugees, uh, those who need to be freed, those who are administering uh, mm. the, the, the CAT or, or our, our institutions, and anyone who needs to be liberated. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'll give you one other example. We and, actually and it, use Oh, one more. Funds. Sorry, yeah, one more. Sure. Is that most important one? And anything for the cause of God. <laughs> Mashallah. Be and, there, right. there, there is right. a, um, we used it, for example, recently, we had a Muslims for Migrants campaign. And uh, some of the, uh, the folks in ICE jails um, couldn't afford cash bailout. You know, like there was a brother from like West Africa who was like separated from his kids, um, stuck in an ICE jail, unable to like work with a lawyer for his case. And it was simply because he couldn't afford cash bail. Um, so we were able to use, uh, and along with like Believers Bailout, another organization, like we use the CAT funds to bail someone out of jail just so they would have access to a lawyer at their deportation trial and be able to be at home with their with his daughter mm -hmm. and he hadn't, he hadn't seen his daughter uh he would like like he was expecting a daughter when he was put into prison he never got to even hold his daughter for a couple of years while while not being able to afford cash bail it's mm, a great story um so tell us again the 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 link to the uh yeah uh, show the launch good uh i will show that here and i'll show it with on with the MPAC logo here too. <laughs> That's right. So, there you go. Yeah, there we go. So this is the, this is the link launchgood.com slash Corona. Mm -hmm. This is where you can contribute to help those who are struggling financially in America from COVID-19. Or if you are someone out there in need um, who has been hit hard financially because of this, you can go there and find the, uh, the application form to apply for help as well. Yeah. Inshallah. That's very important. Thank you. Thank you for that. Maybe uh, uh, we can share that link in the chat room too. Launch. Yeah, we just did. Um, okay. Awesome, did. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. We just, we just did. And then, um, and, and everyone please go ahead and, and go to the link. And if you need help, you can apply there. If you can give help, uh, you can give, um, uh, on that link as well. Tarek, some, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, God bless you for all your great work. Well, thank you. We, we really couldn't do it without all of our partners. MPAC has been a great partner on multiple campaigns. You guys are already doing good work, but whenever we've you know, come to you guys uh, and said, can you help amplify this? Can you promote it? Can you send this out you know, to your list? And, um, and you've always come up, you know, always come to help you know, as, as publicity partners and uh, sponsoring campaigns. I mean, you guys, you guys gave a large sum of money even for the Portland Heroes when we did the campaign for uh, Muslims unite to support the Portland heroes and you know, like we've worked together a lot. So tell, tell, tell us again wh what that was about. That's a very important uh, yeah. story. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, that's at launchgood.com slash Portland. If you want to take a look at launchgood.com slash Portland, um, three, three men on the Portland train, Portland, uh, TriMet, um, were defending gir two girls who are being attacked with, uh, Islamophobic, slurs. There was a white supremacist on a Portland train attacking two girls with Islamophobic comments. These three guys defended those girls and ended up uh, losing their lives. You know, three, three men in Portland. One of them was critically injured. Two lost their lives, um, the Portland heroes. And uh, we partnered with the Muslim community in Portland, the Muslim Educational Trust, and said, we want to raise money for the families of the victims here, these three, uh, these three families. That was actually the largest campaign we've ever done. MPAC contributed a large amount, I think $10,000 just from MPAC themselves. And uh, this, it ended up raising over half a million dollars, over $600,000 towards the families of, um, of, uh, of, of the three heroes. 
Um, and one of them survived, Micah um, had survived, but the others um, lost their lives. And one of them, Mr. Best, who was actually a US military veteran, um, left behind a wife and uh, three teenagers as well. You know, so, you know, obviously, and they're, they're all going to need to go to college and all this, you know, stuff. So, like, it, it was something that was a beautiful campaign. MPAC stepped up and, and helped there. But those are the kind of things where we try to go in and respond to evil with good. And also to show as a community what that meant to us, that they stood up, not as Muslims, but as allies. They were like the Abu Talibs of Portland. <laughs> right. Know? That's right. Um, and, and how many organizations do you get to... To unite behind this effort you have a ton of organizations that come yeah i mean right now there's like 30 you know we we, we um if you go to like launchgood.com slash corona we have muslim uh, influencers and organizations and it could be your local mosque it could be um a, a national nonprofit. yeah um so we have a form where you can sign up as a muslim leader or as a muslim group to endorse the campaign which basically says I will promote this on social media. I'll send out an email about it. And then we, and then they go ahead and get listed on the page as a partner. Cause we, you know, often, like you said, like, you know, star behind the stars, like we don't, we don't want to brand this as like a celebrate mercy thing. This is a Muslim thing. It says Muslims unite. So we want the umbrella to be wide. We want any local mosque, any national organization, any regional group to endorse this. And, and we want to show, you know, we're, we're hitting multiple birds with one stone here. We're helping people. In America, but we also realize we have to change the narrative about Muslims as well. So right. you know, we the, the, the media has is mostly neg you know it's like eighty percent negative the media what, what people see in the media about Muslims. So we're trying to hit multiple birds with one stone here, help people, but also tell people who we are. Like this is what our faith teaches. Thank you so much, Tar. God bless you for this great work. I think that is the way we change the narrative is through our actions and giving. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Sometimes we focus too much on who we are not. Right. We need to focus on who we are. <laughs> right. This That's is what exactly. our prophet is, yeah. inshallah. Inshallah. Well, thank you for that. Stay, thank you. Stay safe. We'll be in touch and we'll continue supporting. In fact, that we're going to go donate right now. Awesome. Uh, awesome. More for the, for the campaign that you're launching. Thank you so much. Take care. Right. Thank you.